Good morning and welcome to San Marino Community Church. Worship is going to begin in just a few moments, but we want to share some opportunities that we have for you to join with others in service to our community and to the larger world. Have a look.
hope that you found something that speaks to your heart in serving those around us. Now, join me as we reflect and prepare our hearts to worship the living God. Welcome to San Marino Community Church Online Worship with a very special greeting to all of those who mother in the world on this Mother's Day. I'm Reverend Jan Cook, Senior Associate here at SMCC, and it is my privilege to welcome you into this celebration of worship. We gather today in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me in the chat room and send greetings to one another. Sign in, let us know you're here, share your thoughts, ask questions. And let us know how we can pray for you. 
Our children's spiritual formation leaders and Reverend Becca Bateman welcome your children to join them in the children's Zoom room at 1015. Whether you're worshiping with us on Sunday or worshiping with us at another time during the week, we still hope that you'll take a moment to connect with us. You see that a QR code has popped up on your screen. Just aim your device at that code, click on the bar, and you'll be taken to a Google form. Let us know where you're worshiping from and leave us a comment or a prayer request. We really look forward to hearing from you, so don't hesitate to reach out. Engaging with the vital energy of the body of Christ in worship, study, and service are significant practices for a healthy spiritual life. Please take note of all the ways that you can be part of the story here at SMCC. Or if you're an out-of-town worshiper, seek out opportunities where you can to serve. You know, my mom is at an age now that she sincerely is frustrated with me and my sister when we buy her gifts. She feels that she has everything she could possibly need. So this year for Mother's Day, I gave her the gift of donating money in her name to an organization we here at SMCC have supported for many years. San Marino Community Church partners with Union Station Homeless Services to provide hot meals to its residents on the second Sunday of every month. Now you can give a gift from the heart and be a part of the homeless solution for as little as $5 a meal. So use this online form and select Union Station. Make a donation of any amount. Contributions by check and Venmo are also welcome. And please indicate Union Station on your gift. Printable gift cards are also available at smccpby.com. To give to that special someone telling them a gift of hope has been given in their honor. In two weeks, on May 23rd, for the contemporary service only, we will welcome people back to in-person worship. You must pre-register for this service, and the space is limited, but the doors are opening. Remember, this is for the contemporary service only. Traditional service is targeting a date for in-person worship at the end of June. On Sunday, May 23rd, my family will be attending worship with me. It's an opportunity for me to celebrate my partnership with SMCC over the past five and a half years and to share a blessing with this wonderful congregation. And then on Thursday evening, May 27th, we have an opportunity to gather for laughter, exchanging stories, and wishing one another all the good things that God has to offer before I relocate to San Diego. I hope you feel the welcome I have for each of you, and I hope I will have the opportunity to express my gratitude in person. Please pre-register for this live in-person event. And now, let's prepare ourselves to worship God. Pour your light, Holy Spirit of God, into our hearts and minds. Help us to know more clearly and grasp more fully the good news of Jesus. And help us then to know how to share it.
come and lay down the burden of shame and guilt. Let's bring our real selves to the Lord in confession. Knowing God, you see beyond these clothes and cars and houses and checking accounts. You see us in all our vulnerabilities and you love us into the open. Forgive us when we would put you to the test, O God. Forgive us when we act as though you have not proven your love for us. Forgive us when we ask, what would he do? As though you have not made yourself known in scripture, sacrament, community, and spirit. Remind us, Lord, that the true power is found only in your love and that the highest status is in our service to you and to your beloved community. God of all places, we thank you for this moment where we are able to step out and be quiet and in that silence lift up our most vulnerable places, those places of confession, in our personal confession. Amen. Galatians 5.1 reminds us that Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. These are the words that remind us that the great liberator has set us free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
This morning, we continue in our sermon series, Our Church, Christ's Home. Last week, we were talking about how there are no private rooms in the church. And this week, we're talking about how worship is at the center of our life and indeed needs to remain at the center of our life. I invite you to please join me as we look at our scripture passage for today, coming from Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. Please join me as we listen together for the word of the Lord. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and waited on him. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me as we pray, praying the words of Augustine of Hippo. Come, Lord, stir us up and call us back. Kindle and seize us. Be our fire and our sweetness. Let us love and let us run. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our attention is a limited resource. A person only has so much of it before it runs out. Researchers in attention economics define attention as focused mental engagement on a particular item of information where items come into our awareness and we attend to a particular item and then decide whether to act. The theory of attention economics says that humans have limited cognitive resources that can be used at any given time. And so when those cognitive resources are allocated to one task, the resources available for other tasks is limited. That's why all of us have trouble multitasking. All of us, even those people who say that they are good at multitasking, really are just better 
at switching their attention quickly from one thing over to another. Our attention is a limited commodity. And many experts in attention economics would say that in today's society and the post-information age, our attention is more than limited. They would say that our attention is scarce. Psychologist and economist Herbert Simon said, in an information-rich world, the wealth of information means a dearth of attention. Information consumes the attention of its recipients. So a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. It's a really striking phrase, the poverty of attention. For those of us who are burning the candle at both ends, for those of us who are consumed by our screens, for those of us who leave the television flickering day and night, or who are in the constant company of talk radio or the 24-hour news cycle, we are the paupers of attention. For all of us who feel bombarded by a relentless stream of information, who snap our focus by, between aging parents, hurting children, health diagnoses, world events, global pandemics, and changing colors in our public health tiers. Friends, we are the paupers of attention. The particular demands on our attention are unique to the time that we live in. But humanity has always struggled with the poverty of attention. We see humanity's poverty and attention reflected to us throughout the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament scriptures. In Deuteronomy 6, in Matthew 22, in Mark 12, in Luke 10, scripture tells us to love the Lord our God with all our heart and all our mind and all our strength. In other words, to give God our undivided attention. In Psalm 95, the psalmist beckons us and beckons the people to come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. In Psalm 99, the psalmist commands the people to exalt the Lord, our God, to worship at God's footstool. The psalmists are urging us to give God our full attention. Central to the story of God and humanity is God calling out for our attention and humanity responding with distraction. Over and over again, the Hebrew prophets and Jesus himself urge the people to turn away from distraction and to pay attention to God. But in the end, the Israelites still clamor for a king. Gomer still runs from Hosea. And Jesus is raised high on the cross. Humanity has always suffered from a poverty of attention. Which is why we are constantly called to worship through scripture and by the spirit. Because worship is primarily the act of turning our attention to God. Worship is not an hour out of our week. Worship is not an obligation to be lived out by good people. Worship is not a compilation of songs, sermons, and prayers to be critiqued. And worship is not a vehicle for feeding our own spirits. We are only engaged in worship when we engage the choice of turning our whole attention completely away from ourselves and our distractions and place it entirely upon God in whatever varied way we can gift our attention to God, be it singing our admiration or listening for God's prompting in silence, speaking our hearts to God's ears, or even lamenting the world's brokenness and crying out for justice. Worship is central to who we are called to be as the church because we are called to follow God first and foremost and we can only follow God if we're paying attention to God if we are paying attention to who God is and what God values and where God is moving I really believe that Jesus knew this 
in our scripture passage for this morning. Those of us who have been around the church for a while hear a very familiar story. When Jesus is at his weakest, having fasted for 40 days and being isolated from his community, the devil came and tempted Jesus three times, saying, If you are the Son of God, then command these stones to become bread. If you are the Son of God, then throw yourself down from the temple. All of this that you see from the highest of heights can be yours if you just fall down and worship me. With each challenge, the devil is tempting Jesus to turn his attention away from God. You're hungry, he says. Turn your attention to food. You're lonely, he says. Turn your attention to testing the speed of angels' wings to serve you. You're weak, he says. Turn your attention to gaining power. With each challenge, the devil is tempting Jesus to turn his attention away from God and to serve his attention to himself. I think that's why the last words of Jesus to the devil are as powerful as they are when he says, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. My friends, Jesus would not be distracted. God held all of his attention. There's a phrase in attention economics for the distractions that wrestle for our attention. It's called information pollution. And when I look at this exchange between Jesus and the devil in this desert, in this weak moment, it's clear to me that the devil is trying to pollute Jesus' attention toward God. Sort of like spam pollutes our email boxes or billboards pollute our highways. The devil wanted Jesus to fix his attention on Jesus' own needs, even to the point of giving his attention to the devil to get what he wants. I know that this story only has Jesus and the devil going back and forth three times, but I can imagine how relentless those three times felt to a Jesus who was tired and irritable and hungry and weak, because after all, Even just a few repeated interruptions to our attention can break us down, can get us to shift focus, can divert our attention. We know this because the beckoning for us to turn our attention away from God can feel relentless to us as well. And often we cannot withstand more than one interruption to our attention on God, let alone three. So my friends, I leave us with a question today. What or who has your attention? If information consumes our attention, then what or who consumes you? Whatever it is, there is an antidote to our information pollution. It is found in worship. It is found in our giving our attention to God with all our heart and with all our mind and with all of our strength. Friends, it is found when we turn our attention to God. Amen. Thank you for watching over me All of the sleepless nights you lay awake Thank you for knowing when to hold me close And when to let me go Thank you for every stepping stone And for the path that always leads me home I thank you for the time it took to see the heart inside of me. You gave me the roots to start this life, and then you gave me wings to fly, and I learned to dream 
Because you believe in me There's no power like it on this earth No treasure equal to its worth It's the gift of a mother's love Thank you for every sunlit day that filled the corners of my memory. Thank you for every selfless unsung deed I know you did for me. Thank you for giving me the choice to search my soul till I could find my voice. I thank you for teaching me to be strong enough gave me wings to fly and I learned a dream because you believed in me there's no power like it on the earth no treasure equal to its worth it's the gift of a mother Please join me in prayer. Spirit of love, you have given a divine invitation to humankind that we might partner with you in creation. What trust you have, what hope, and what possibilities. You have kissed our innermost being and gifted us with children who call us mother. Bless those, O oh Lord, who nurture and listen and laugh and scold from a place of deep love. Bless those, O oh Lord, who must look to you as a model for mother because there is no one else. Bless those, O oh Lord, who choose to be mother to classrooms of children, orphans, and little ones who are sick and dying. Bless those, O oh Lord, who sit in our nurseries on Sunday morning to mother our children, who hold and rock our babies and gift us all with lessons of your love. Bless those, O oh Lord, who celebrate their children in the letting go as well as the keeping close. Bless those, O oh Lord, whose gift of wisdom and kindness so generously shared reaches out to mother all other mothers. And dear Lord, hear our final prayer. We pray for all the children of the world, for every child in every corner of the earth and for every child not yet born. We pray that every person might be given a mother's heart. This heart is big enough to reach out to children and the childlike, to those who cannot help themselves until hope is restored and our loving, become more like yours. We lift this prayer up to you, O Holy Father, O Holy Mother, with the words that your Son taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, there are many ways that we can turn our attention toward God. And God wants all of our attention. God wants all of the resources that we have been blessed with to begin with. 
And so as a way of showering your attention upon God and as a way of building up the work of the people of Christ in this place, if you are able to give to the ministry of San Marino Community Church, we would be grateful. We have three ways for you to do that. You can give through Venmo. You can give through a check that you send to the office, or you can give by clicking the donate button online. Any way that you are able to give financially, through prayer, through service, any way that you can shower your attention upon God is a way that builds up our community of faith here and across the globe. I also want to mention how grateful I am to be in ministry with the Reverend Jan Cook. You know that we have some recognition of her ministry and celebration of her work here and throughout her 43 years of ministry coming up at the end of this month. But I also want to highlight an opportunity for you if you would like to give a love gift directly to Jan. There are ways to do that. Please just contact our office and let us know and we will work with you in making sure that we send Jan with every ounce of our love into retirement. And now, my friends, I invite you to receive the benediction. A.W. Tozer said, Any person on this earth who is bored and turned off by worship is not ready for heaven. Friends, we are worshiping when we are turning our full attention to God, when we are allowing ourselves to be consumed by God, and when what we observe in God is turned into action. So let's go. Let's be a people who live at attention of the Almighty God and who live our lives in a way that honors that God when we are alone, when we are together, and when we are doing anything in our lives. I invite you to go in the words of Paul to Timothy. Keep your head about you in every situation. Endure hardship. Be the good news of every person you meet. And carry that out as your ministry to the fullest extent. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, all of God's people say together, amen. Amen.